live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2022 World Championships Day 6 Finals Swim Swam Watch Party. So good to be here with all of you viewers today. We've got a pretty stacked lineup for you. Uh, first of all, we've got Women's 100 Freestyle. Let's pull up some swim stats here. <clears throat> We got the top 12 women's 100 free performers all time for you right up here. Uh, two of them, Molly O'Callia and Shana Jack, were done just this year um, at the Aust 2022 Australian Nationals. Unfortunately, Shana Jack had an incident in the warm up pool uh, where she fractured her hand uh, in a freak accident where she collided with another swimmer, we think. Um, so she won't be in the final. Molly O'Callaghan, the number eight performer all time, 52-49, will be in that final. She's top seed heading into today, as is number one on that list, Sarah Schostrom. She broke that world record 51-7 in the 2017 World Championships, leading off Sweden's 400 free relay. And she is the only one who, the only other one, excuse me, who will be competing um, in this final, it's on this list. Uh, that's not true. Penny Oleksiak, who's number nine down there, is also in this final, um, along with her country mate, Kyla Sanchez. Gold medal, Mel. What's up, man? I was just looking up Tori's PB in the Hunter Free. Yeah. I don't think it's what she went here. One second. Where'd she go? 53.0. Oh, actually, that could be it. It's a, it's a good swim. I'm not sure if she's ever been 52. Uh, I think she's won national with a similar time. I'm gonna, the reason why I'm looking this up is that I fear Tori because I, I fear that she's going to take swim time down again. If she wins the hundred freestyle, if she if she did anything, she I, I, I mean, I see her name. I'm like, oh no, swim, Tori swim, Husk. Swim. When did she break swim swim? No, when she when she when she broke that American record on the first and the and the hundred fly. Mm. Swim swam swim swam came down. She took it down for about thirty seconds. Traffic, so much traffic was loading on. So her best time is fifty three oh four, which she did in the semifinals. Wow, fifty three. Oh four PB. Yeah, uh, that's that's not too bad. Um, if you're just joining us out there, um, pull up this pull up the live stream and, and watch along with us. You can watch on Peacock. You can watch on the Olympic Channel. Um, we have a whole article about where you can watch from other countries outside of the United States on swim swam so uh watch along with us <clears throat> she went 52 9 leading off the relay did she did tori go 52 9 leading off the relay let's let's see uh she did 52 96 so she broke 53 at this meet she's having a good meet did you say 52.96? Yep. Okay, we have to update that in our database. I'm updating it now. Thank you, Aylin Liu, for this comment. Aylin Liu, coming in with the, coming in with the stats for us. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but we have quite a few guests scheduled today. Some will be popping in and out. Some might stay on the whole time. But uh, it looks like it's going to be a good. It looks like it's going to be a good day. If you're an elite swimmer with lots of Olympic gold medals, you want to join the stream. Just text me. <laughs> just text Melvin. Just text the Melvins. Leon's about to show his long course free prowess by dropping one forty three nine, making us all look like a bunch of idiots. <laughs> That's if okay. Gonna, it's gonna lead, if Leon leads off the relay, that's a power move by France. I mean, it's, he should uh, be. We're okay. Which he, 
he is not. He's going second. What is Carson? Second. Ooh. We got our first guest of the day, Gretchen Walsh. Oh, hi. <laughs> What's going on, Gretchen? How's it going? Nothing much. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to watch this 100 free. Absolutely. Do you have any predictions for this 100 free? Uh, well, I've been thinking about it a lot this morning. Um, and I was like looking at the results from last night. I feel like I'm betting on Sarah Sostrom winning. Um, just because her experience. Um, but I really like can't say who's going to get second or third. Like I think it's really going to be a fight to the finish. But Tori has been having like an amazing meet. She's on fire. So I really think she has a good shot at making the podium. Because um, she went like 52-9. Or did she lead off in a 52-7? Yes. Or... Okay, 52-9. She, she led off in 52-9. Okay, we we, so, we were just figuring that out for ourselves too. Okay, yeah. So I think she has a really good shot at uh, dropping and getting on that podium. And even Claire, um, she's going to have to have a great swim. But, I mean, it's anyone's race at that point. So, yeah. yeah and Penny. I, I'm not ruling out <laughs> Penny. Dude, Penny's always in the mix. After, after what she did in Rio, I think, yeah. I think she's fair yeah. game no matter what. Um, she's obviously a racer and a gamer, and it looks like she's in pretty good form at this meet. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. After, the, after, the, after the 200 free, she'd like to take that bad taste out of her mouth. Yeah, after she's the, oh, sorry, yeah. looking for some comebacks, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she wants she wants individual hardware, I think. Um, I'm pulling for Sarah Shostrom as well because she – is on my swim swim fantasy drafts team and Tori and Claire are not, they are on other people's fantasy teams. Oh, so, uh, I'm pulling for, for shows from as well. I think, I think she's got the experience. I don't know where she is in terms of, um, her racing and her, uh, training, how fit, what her fitness levels like. I think 55, 50 free are hers to lose. I think hundred free. Maybe a little more questionable, but ooh, guest number two, Hi. Olympic champion Lydia Jacoby. What's up? How's it going, Lydia? I'm good. Just got out of morning practice. Ooh, so what glad you're here. We, we were just talking about you. We wanted to know you went. You were going to Texas. Why didn't Why didn't you go to UVA? Inquiring. <laughs> oh. No. Loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, UVA never tried to recruit me. Todd's gonna Todd's gonna drop in. Todd's gonna drop in and be like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> That's all right, we got you gotta keep it interesting. Oh yeah. Uh Lydia, what was morning practice like today? It was good. I just took a little break, so this week's kind of my first week um back in, so nothing too hard. Some breath control stuff. Are you a fan of breath control? No, absolutely not. <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> yeah, Gretchen, you like breath control. I do. You do? Yes. Brit what do you like about it? I mean, why, why, what makes it fun or enjoyable for you? Um, I just think, like, the more you do it throughout a practice, the easier it gets. Um, mm -hmm. And, it, like, it really makes me, like, get into, like, a DPS kind of stroke which i like um but it's definitely hard but it keeps you out of doing like long distance stuff you know like you can only hold your breath for so long so it's like <laughs> 50s and 25s true if my body's really tired i'm always like let's do breath control because yeah. like if you do breath control then you can't like be told you're not doing anything but it's like not that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's like a different we, we, type of we, we would always do breath control when I was in college after our coach found out that we had a party the night before. I'm not going to go into any details. I'll just let you unpack that on your own. Okay. <laughs> I always liked breath control because that felt like a mental game that I had total control of. Like racing someone else in a practice, obviously you can only control how far you do, but but breath control always felt like a mental game where I'm I was in full control, and so I was like, well, I can do this if if I you know really 
if I have the will to do it, it's possible. So like, I feel good about that. Right. It's definitely all mental. Yeah. So I always liked breath control. Oh, we got a, wow. US looks good in that metal table. I don't know if you guys are watching the stream oh, yeah. or, or as far as I am, but I think we're leading in every category. <laughs> oh, <okay>. by far. <laughs> so not too Jeez. shabby there. <laughs> we're almost 20 medals ahead of everyone else. <laughs> That's, that's, that's like pretty it. good for the U.S. We have to yeah. keep in mind that Australia has the same population as Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I Sometimes I do wish they would put the medal count by state up there, like what state each athlete <laughs> represents. That might that yeah. might be a, a more a more fair metric, but... Lydia, that's, do you... Go ahead, Mel. No, no, no. That's something that Braden will do. And on the topic of Braden Keith, co-founder and editor-in-chief, what you guys need to know about the, the, the fantasy thing that they're doing is that Coleman doesn't really care about winning. He just wants to beat Braden. Okay. <laughs> we have a fantasy draft. My only goal is to beat Braden. And I don't... He had Caleb Dressel on his team. Caleb Dressel's out for the meet, and I still don't think I'm going to beat him. Who did because... you have on yours? <sighs> My big players are Katie Ledecky, okay. Michael Andrew, okay, Sarah Shostrom. Okay, wow, you went big. I I tried, but he has. <laughs> here's the deal: he has Tori Husk, Molly O'Callaghan, and Yang Jun Chuan, and they are all getting major relay points and individual. Yang Jun Chuan won the 200 free on the women's side. Tori is winning multiple medals, I'm thinking, individually and on relays. Molly O'Callaghan, multiple medals individually and on relays. Yeah. You don't stand a chance. <laughs> yeah, like, even with Caleb out of the meet, now he already medaled in several things. Seriously. He, he already had two gold medals. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, Tough luck. As we're, as we're, <laughs> just, it's just ahead of this, ahead of this final. Gretchen... Uh, you have the most expertise here. You know what's what's going through your head when you're when you're parading out for a for a hundred meter sprint. Um, I, there's a lot going through me, especially at a arena like this. I've been to Budapest once, and it's it's definitely intimidating uh, walking out. Um, I'm my first thing is don't fall start. <laughs> like, but I have the slowest start ever, so maybe they shouldn't be thinking about that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think recently I've been working on kind of like my mental game going into it. And honestly, it's just like stick to what you know, like your instincts, like don't start spinning. Like you got to use your easy speed on the first lap. Um, and then from there, it's just a race for the finish. So um, I think all these girls have a lot of experience in this race and just using that to their advantage and knowing what works for them is going to be really important. Uh, Gretchen, so we saw Molly O'Callaghan essentially negative split her semifinal swim yesterday. She went 52.8. Can you put into context what negative splitting 100 long course meter freestyle, like how hard that is? Yeah, I don't think I'd ever be capable of doing that. Like, that's almost unheard of. I don't know if she did that, but I mean, what does she, did she go like a 26 and a 26? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Let me let I'd me pull up her surprised. splits. She was 26-4, 26-4, 52 Wow. That's well, a negative that's a negative split with a dive, obviously. Yes. Yeah. For sure. I wonder if she'll try to take it out faster right now. Oh, it doesn't I don't know where you guys are. It doesn't look like it. Right now she's at least in fifth. Um I'm at the fifty wall. I don't know where you all are. Oh, you're ahead. You're gonna I'm go. a little behind. Sarah, yeah, Sarah's okay. out at 25, 25. All right. I mean, Sarah's out strong. <sighs> oh, Tori. Is that Tori Husk? Yeah. Tori looks good. Tori looks uh, and, now, good. and now Molly is creeping up on the field. Come on, Tori. Come on. Come on. Oh, my gosh. Tori looks like she's going to win from my yeah, angle. Tori looks good. Oh, but Sarah. Oh. Tori's breathing so much. Does she always do that? 
<laughs> That's a good oh, question. Oh, wow. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Team trials. To- Wait, we had Team USA on the podium. Yeah. That was oh, a weird. tight finish. I wonder where Claire ended up. Uh, let's see if we've got results up in Omega. Uh, so, Tori was third, shows from second. I'm so I'm a little surprised shows from hold on. Tori was third. Claire was eighth at fifty three eight. Okay. Um. Oh, Penny. Penny was fourth by six one hundreds. Oh. I mean, it's but, such a tight race that that could happen to anyone. You know. What what what's yeah. what's final results? What did Tori go? Tori went fifty two ninety two. Showstrom was fifty two eight zero. Molly was fifty two sixty seven. So. Uh, Oh. 25 9 26 7 for Molly. Jeez. Tori. The you lost PB. Some fantasy points there. <laughs> so I yeah, so I got I Showstrom got a silver, which is great, but Braden has Tori and Molly, so he definitely outscored me on that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah more of a Tori's that's fantastic. Tori did she swam so well in the hunter fly. She's done a PB yeah. in the hunter free twice today. Um yeah, that's a great, yeah. great swim. I mean, she's having just a great meet so far. Uh you I Gretchen, you raced Tori in the hundred. Oh, you didn't race Tori in the hundred free because she was in the B heat at NCAA's. She was, yeah. Uh, so, so I can't even do. Was that a big surprise to you? I know at that meet, so many things are happening. Um, but was that something that you noticed and you were like, "Oh, she didn't even make the final." Yeah, I was honestly a little shocked um, by like who was in the final of that. Um, because it was me, Catherine, um, Morgan Scott. Is that from mm-hmm. Alabama? Yeah. Um, I think two girls from Alabama made it. Yeah. Um, but I was definitely shocked by that because I just, like, know what Tori's capable of. Um, and she still, like, had a really good time in the B final at night. Um, but clearly, like, once she got to world champ trials, like, she was good there, too. So, I think... <laughs> Uh, you know, you give and take some. So, mm-hmm. Gretchen, I don't know if we've even gotten to speak with you since World Champ Trials. Um, where can you tell us about where you were at at that meet and how you felt coming out of it? Um, honestly, it was definitely a weird time. Just with NCs a month before, um, it was hard. The week after, when everyone else was kind of like celebrating our NCAA championship and um, we like were stuck at practice, but Todd wasn't there because he was at the men's. Um, It was definitely some like tough weeks of training, um, but I did feel good going into that meet. And I think Todd said he like wasn't really surprised by my 100 free, maybe a little bit, but um, he definitely said that like he thought my 50 free was going to be my best race. And it definitely was. Um, And I mean, I was definitely, like, crushed when I didn't make the team. I don't think there's, like, a better way to put that um, just by missing it by the shortest amount that you can miss it by, 0.01. But I've just – honestly, like, I moved on from that, like, the night that that happened because I was like, I can't dwell on this. Like, I'm going to take a quick break and now refocusing on nationals. Um, And I'm, like – trying this new thing where I'm not wearing a suit anymore so I'm seeing how that works with my mental game um but yeah I think the focus this summer is just nationals and bouncing back and having fun you're not wearing a suit anymore in like a fast suit yeah in races or in practice um no in races like the hundred free and the hundred back <clears throat> interesting so you're going to show up at nationals in in a practice suit yeah this is breaking news this is <laughs> I mean, this is a story uh i don't, I don't understand that like, unpack that for us what um i don't why? know i think it's just like an experiment um i was a little like at nationals it's until i go a certain time um wearing a practice suit because 
like I go times in practice that I could that I'm not even going at meets so it's like until I can translate that into a meet like I'm not allowed to but it's like I'm I'm doing this for myself it was Todd's idea but we're just trying it out you know this so the tech suit has to be earned it's your armor right. you only armor up if you've earned it right so it's I mean, I only have one more meet before nationals and I'm not sure like if I'll go those times, but definitely at least in prelims at nationals, I won't be suited. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Was this your idea or no. someone else's idea? <laughs> <laughs> no. I've definitely thought that the suit kind of like gives people a different mentality on things, but I've never mm -hmm. thought to not wear one. Okay. So was it Todd's idea? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, and do when, when, so are you wearing practice? Like if you guys go fast, will you put a suit on or no? Well, so I just went to a meet last weekend actually. And I suited up at finals for every race, except the hundred free and 50 or the hundred free and hundred back. Um, mm -hmm. But those are like the only, we don't really suit up in practice very often. Okay. Yeah. We should say we should say this. We've been talking about this a little bit during our, our live parties, but it's uh, we know U.S. Nationals in Irvine is going to be crazy. U.S. Swimming is making a big investment in it. It's gonna they're going to have two VIP sections. It's, uh, really? you know, it's going to be sold out. They're going to mm -hmm. do it up. They have you know U.S. Nationals used to be a really big deal. There was a lot of energy put into it. So U.S. Swimming is kind of excited about this event, and I think it's I think there's going to be a lot of I think it's going to be good vibes there. Yeah, I'm really excited to be back out in California. I think swimming outside is it's fun. So I'm looking forward to it a lot. I love Irvine. I love that. that Me that's too. A, I'd like to have nationals at Irvine every year. <laughs> yes. That would be great. Lydia, are you going to nationals too? I'm not sure yet. Um, okay. I just Kinda took makes like, you want to. I know. I it sounds fun. I I just took like three weeks off. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, after Mary Nostrum. So, I don't know. I guess it just depends how it's going. Yeah. Because then you have to go to Texas, too. So Yeah. I might, do, yeah. We'll see. Do either of you get to train outside during the summers? No. No. Bummer. First flight of the men's semis is in the water. They touched the 23-3 out. Yeah, you know, that's uh, not in this heat, so I don't. I think people are sort of like they're <laughs> they're getting their coffee. They're going well, to the bathroom. Lydia's uh, arena teammate Noe Ponti is in lane five. He looks strong. Josh Leendo also making a big push at the end. Oh, that wasn't Noe. That was yeah, some I was going to say I don't think he's Sorry. in here. Fifty-one-one. <laughs> Fifty-one-one right. for a semi. Hmm. Uh, Josh Leendo's having a great meet so far. He already won a medal in the 100 free. He had a great split on Canada's 400 free relay. I mean, he is – David Popovich is all, obviously the young gun of the meet, but I, Josh is right there. He's only 19, um, and he's been looking really strong so far. There's a lot of really young people at this meet. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like – Leon Marchand just turned 20, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Um, he's super young. I think we, we reported the youngest swimmer of the meet is 13. I think oh she's from God. Korea. Uh, yeah, 13-year-old Moon Sua of South Korea. Um, and she made a semifinal in the tuna breast. Wow. Uh, two... 26. <clears throat> Lydia, what are you having? What, what, you having breakfast? What's for breakfast? Yes, I am. Sorry, I just got out of morning practice. It's, uh, I'm having a, like, smoothie bowl with peanut butter and granola. I had that this morning, too. Yeah. Look at us. <laughs> is that a, so is that a, is that a go-to post-practice? Like, after morning practice, do you guys have a meal that you usually eat or, or like, you know, one day a week, is there a meal that you're like, okay, after this Saturday morning or Friday morning, like I'm going to this place or I'm having this meal. 
Um, I always eat a bagel before morning practice. Um, and then afterward, it depends on the day or like what I'm doing, but I'm definitely a big egg person. I'm not a big egg person. I no. Too no, slimy. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't like scrambled eggs, but I Fair like enough. treat myself with a smoothie bowl after practice like once a week. And then I'll I, I don't eat before practice, but like if I want to eat in between like lift and swim, I'll have a chewy bar. Um and then I'll usually just eat like toast and peanut butter and bananas or sausage or something. I got to cook for myself, so, and I don't know how to cook, so, <laughs> the basics. Are you, what, so you're in Charlottesville for the summer, Gretchen, are you yeah. uh, in an apartment? Yeah, I just moved into my apartment, like, last week. Mm. That's exciting. Yeah. Is that a big change? Yeah, I like it a lot better, though. It's, it's just more private, you know, I don't have to, like, use a public bathroom all the time, which is nice, and. Um, I like my roommates a lot. I'm living with three other girls on the swim and dive team. So, um, and we all get along, which is really great. That's, that's good. We're, good roommates make a big difference. Mel and yeah, I have had does. this discussion a lot. Uh, if you, if you have a subpar roommate, it can make your life <laughs> not so good. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Mulek's walking out right now. This guy looks like he's taking a Sunday stroll. He's walking uh -huh. up a warm up. He was a fifty one eight on 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 the way out for the <laughs> world record two hundred fly one fifty point three four. He was a fifty point six eight this morning to qualify. What's he going to go tonight? I mean, does it even matter? Is he going to turn in like a fifty point low cruising? I think he'll go fifty point. I hope Michael goes fifty point. Yeah, because I who was the other American? Final. Caleb. Oh, oh yeah. right, obviously. Okay. Yeah, I know. I was thinking that um, a minute ago too. I was like, <laughs> "Wait, who who is our other?" Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Think uh, Michael will hold down the fort. <laughs> Michael, my I have confidence. Michael will hold down the fort. Mm. Uh, this is a big session for him, though. He's got hundred fly, and then has to turn around just a few events later and go for the fifty free. During Mare Nostrum, he was swimming like 12 events a day. Like, literally. Dude, Just with the 50 uh, tournament. Yeah. Yeah. So, if for the viewers out there who aren't aware, at the Monaco, right? At the Monaco mm -hmm. stop, they have 50 skins. And it's like on day one, you do prelims. And then at finals, you do quarterfinals. And then on day two, it's semifinals. And then on day three, it's the finals. Is that how it works, Lydia? It goes everyone, top 16, top eight, top four, top two. Oh my so God. it goes all the way to a duel. Michael Andrew out. Michael Andrew touched first at the wall, 23. World record pace is 23 flat. World record's 49.45. Milak is, ooh, Milak is now like everyone's He's back moving. at his hips. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, Michael yeah. had a long finish. He's fourth. Milak seems like that was uh, an adequate swim. Milak checks his heart rate. It's a, it's at ninety nine. Fifty point one <laughs> for Christoph Milak. That's insane. Michael Andrew is eighth. Fifty one two. That's a good swim. He got it done. He got in there. That's he all got about in it. There. Um, man, there was another fifty point by Naoki Mizunuma of Japan, 50.8. But yeah, that's a pretty, that's a pretty young field. Well, I um, mean, we're, we're hoping for a world record to witness another world record. He's going to have smooth water. I guess he, I, he'll have, he's going to be swimming in the clear. Do you think that Kristoff can, can break Caleb's world record? I, uh, I think he's going to be on it. He doesn't have to. You know, it's like he could just turn in a 49 plus. I just, I think he's on though. I think he can. I think yeah, he could, he, yeah. Maybe, he didn't look yeah. very tired after that. No, oh, that's oh, when he's really chill. I'm predicting, a, <laughs> I'm predicting a 49, 39 for a new world record 
croissant in your life. That's this. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Wow. That's bold. Michael's being interviewed right now on deck. <laughs> um, so when I, yeah. So it, it, in Barcelona, when I talked to Michael, he was like, yeah, I swam like 18 races in Monaco. And I was like, that has to be an exaggeration. And then I went through and counted mm-hmm. every single race he swam. And he actually swam 18 races in two days because he did he did all of the 50 shootouts and he made it you know pretty far in a lot of them so that that dude does know how to swim back-to-back races i think that's like exactly how he trains too just like 50s back to back to back to back to back every single day (laughs) i think so yeah we got a comment here. Really curious to know how USRPT is managed through an eight-day meet. Seems to be stronger in Marinos from Pro Series format. I mean, that's a good that's a good point. I'm not really sure what their taper looks like or how it differs from um, something like this. But I guess we'll see how he does in this 50 free semi. You guys, you guys are young, Gretchen, Lydia. You guys are, are very young. So we started covering Michael Andrew because he was breaking so many nag records. We started covering when he was a kid back in 2012. I don't know if you guys remember this. You might have been too young, but everyone hated him. Like he was so much hate. He had so many haters, and he was a kid. And we when had he was a like pol- yeah, we had a policy. We had a policy. People got mad at us because our policy was if someone breaks a nag record. We noted. We it's part of history. We, we make report it. it. Right. We report it. Right. We report it. And people were so furious with us because they thought that USRPT was going to kill kill swimming. It was going to kill the sport. Well, I think mostly, it, like, also it was that we were reporting on him. You know what seemed like daily because he kept breaking nag records. Yeah. And everyone was like, "Oh, you're biased," and we're like. He keeps breaking mad records. You can't do anything yeah. about it. I feel like there, like, there's two very different styles of coaching, and then obviously there's like an in between. But like, you have like the sprint training, like Michael does, um, and then you have like just like miles and miles. And I feel like it used to be like way more miles and miles, and then like people like coaches that coached in that style feel very threatened by the this like new race style so i feel like causes a lot of that i don't know there's four types of training there's there's the traditional style we're going to crush you there's usrpt there's what breaststrokers do and then there's what todd does (laughs) uh lydia what yeah where i'm curious where you think your training falls on that spectrum uh, um, not your spectrum, not Mel's spectrum. <laughs> um, I'm definitely more race pace. Um, like during Olympic training camp, Michael and I were doing a lot of really similar things. Um, I was actually in the sprint freestyle group, um, just doing like breaststroke stuff. So probably somewhere in between the weird breaststroke group and the sprint group. <laughs> And I mean, Gretchen, I've I've seen your practices before. I think I have an idea of, of what they look like. But uh, I mean, what is your? Do you count yardage for per practice? Like, do you know how much you go per practice on normal? Um, it definitely depends on the day, because like the days that we do fifty free practice and we're doing racks the whole time, there's like no point in me counting like, ten yards, <laughs> you know. 16 reps um Mm -hmm. but i'd say like 4,000 is pretty average either like above or below it's usually above that i feel like um especially on like aerobic days or like when i do 200 backstroke pace because i do do like 200 backstroke practice every single week um and those are always a little bit more um and that also when i'm doing Heart like longer practices. I'm usually with a different coach, so um, I guess it just depends. I have an observation that I would like to make. I would like to propose this to the House of Delegates at USA Swimming and make this a law in the sport 
that when the sprinters finish practice, that they have to swim slow and stay in the pool so that the distance swimmers don't get to see them get out and walk out of the pool. Just a, just a suggestion. There should no. be a suggestion to make them like not watch us do start work during the practice. <laughs> I always feel bad. <laughs> I feel really bad. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm just uh, just off, off topic. I I I'm behind. Reagan's not in. Uh, Reagan's not in. Uh, in either flight. No, it's she's her. not. Yeah. It's Ryan White and Phoebe Bacon. That's right, Phoebe. That's right. She was third at team trials. Oh man, that is so unusual. Her hunter back though. Her hunter back was was, was there. It's it, it it doesn't work in my brain when she's some two hundred fly instead of two hundred back. Um, yeah, she swam 200 fly, she swam 50 hunter back. Ryan White is smoking it in the 200 back. He's looking good. I'm at number one right now. She yeah. swims so smooth. I love her stroke. Mm -hmm. she, she just signed with Arena. Yeah. Yes. So, teammates with Lydia. Mm -hmm. Uh, in that respect, man, she her stroke is really smooth. They just did the aerial view, and it's like her head is so still. So that's a that's an interesting point. I'm seeing the underwaters right now, and she looks like someone who is torso down. Well, I'm curious if because everyone's philosophy on underwater seems to be different. Are you are you guys when you focus on underwaters? Are you torso down or are you streamlined down? I'd say torso down. Um, you, don't. you definitely don't want to ask me first <laughs> self take advice. But probably torso down because I try not to like move my head a lot. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, 207. First flight. 207. Oh. That's not, it doesn't seem terribly fast, but I mean, she won by a lot. So that's really all you need to do, I guess. Prelims and semis have been have not been fast at this World Champs. Mm, a few of yeah. them have, but yeah, I think overall that's not true. Yeah, it's all right. They, yes, there's been some pop, pop of each. <laughs> yeah. Had, yeah, semi. <laughs> that was, that was, that was, we'll give we'll give him some credit. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, but yeah, yes, I, I agree. Overall, semis haven't been all that. Um, okay, so why why torso down? Why would you not want to involve the rest of your upper body when you're dolphin kicking? Gretchen. I think like there's something to be said about just like choosing a direction and like sticking to it. Like if you're moving your arms like that, you're you're going all over the place, and the only place you want to go is like out and up a little bit. Um, so if they're still, you can like control where you're going and when you're gonna pop up. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely like a part of it that is really important, like with your hips and your core. So, um, but I just like, don't move my arms or my head very much. Mm -hmm. how, how much of an emphasis is, um, underwaters in practice? Like if you're doing an, a normal practice, let's say for a hundred free, a hundred freestyle practice, how many kicks are you taking off of every wall? Um, so whenever they say like strict stroke count, kick count, I do like eight kicks. Um, but when I'm doing the actual like hundred free workout, I'm supposed to do 10 kicks. Um, but literally like everything we do, they set a kick count. So I'm always thinking about it. Um, and mine is like, always a lot more than like the boys. Some of the boys do like two picks. I'm like, what the heck? You don't even have to hold your breath at all. Mine is so much more. Um, but it's a huge emphasis in every practice, especially in backstroke too. It's like, I have to do 12 kicks off every wall basically. So, um, cause that's kind of like what I'm working towards doing. Um, but yeah, there's, there's always a kick count and it's very important. Is that specific by gender? Like the, the girls have a number and the guys have a number. Is that specific to like you, like Gretchen, you have 12 and 
so and so guy, you have two. Um, it's. I think there's definitely like a divide between guys and girls, but some of our guys are good at underwater, so they do more. Um, but yeah, I think like me and Kate kind of have the most, and then from there, it's oh, and Lexi has a lot. Um, but from there, it kind of goes down. And then there's some girls who like don't really do underwaters either because that's just not how they swim. So they do less as well. So it's definitely like it's personalized. Okay. Yeah. Um, Somebody asked a really good question a second ago. Yeah. Just as, I mean, does anyone like semis? Prelims, semis, finals? Does anyone really like semis? I like I semis. Think, yeah. I think it makes prelims a little bit less stressful. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it's also just like, well, for me, it's different because I'm only swimming like a couple events. Like, it would be hard if you had a full plate. Um, but, like, for me, it's nice because then you get, like, the kind of finals atmosphere practice before you actually do, like, the real final. They, you, they dropped them for a period of time <laughs> after, like, the 70s in my era that we didn't have them. We just went prelims finals. And then they when they so brought them back, it was like, God, that's so much work. Mm -hmm. Now, when you won your gold, was it prelims finals? Yeah, it was my, my entire career was prelims. I was 10 years on the national team, and it was all prelims finals. Interesting. We're in the water right now. Are you guys worried? But, but you had you had a B final at your Olympics, right? The consolation heat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had a B final. Yeah, like they don't do that anymore. <laughs> you, you don't make top eight, you're out. <laughs> I mean, but I guess I mean, that's it's like they, 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 they give you, you know, it'd be awesome if they're like you swam in the B final and you got like a golden banana or something. <laughs> cool. do that. Man. that would be nice. Um, oh, -ho. special guest number three, Melanie Margalis, coming to us from Georgia Tech. It's a nice oh, yeah. desk you got there. Oh, uh, <clears throat> how's it going, Melanie? Uh, I'm great. How are you guys? Yeah, it's we're, good we're, to see you. Yeah, I'm gonna be on. I forgot, and then I looked at my email. I was like, "Oh my god, I forgot." <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good. Um, dude, dude, just give us a, a life update right now. Tell us about how your first few days of coaching for Georgia Tech have been. Uh, very stressful. <laughs> my my first day was the first day of open recruiting, so oh. <laughs> like just being like all this stuff is like just being thrown at me like okay you need to like do this 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 and it's like okay here's the list of all these swimmers um those very stressful few days friday and it was only two days by friday i was like toast. but this this week feels a little better this week i'm like okay i can get the hang of this now okay nice i yeah i know i had messaged you about this and you're like Apparently, 16-year-old kids don't care about watching World Championships because I have phone calls scheduled all this week <laughs> during finals. Yeah. Ooh. What? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I guess they just, I don't know. The, nobody wanted to watch. I was actually <laughs> on a call on a FaceTime during Nick's 50 breast swim. Oh, but I told them, I told them, I was like, I'm going to be honest. I have worlds up behind you. I have to watch this race. Um, so I, was, I, I was honest about it. I was like, I got to see it. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I think that was well worth it. Okay. Phoebe, Phoebe Bacon just ran down uh, Kelly McEwen. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, she killed it. 205 nine. She just ran her down. Uh, a good swim. McEwen was out 101.5 at the 100. Look at her. Look at, she, she, yeah. That happened. Mm -hmm. Bacon's so solid. Yeah, I, I think she's been really good. I mean, she's already had a really good summer, but I think she could be really good tomorrow. Yeah. She looks I mean, confident. Yeah, her and Ryan both dropping 205 lows at trials was, was a big flex. Yeah. Um, I'm also excited so to see Ryan tomorrow. Her backstroke is just beautiful. <laughs> We were just talking about that. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so so Phoebe Bacon, Ryan White, first and third, heading into tomorrow's final. Book in, book ended with Kaylee McEwen in there for second seed, so go Team USA. Uh, so, Melanie, yeah, Nick has had a great meet so far. What are your thoughts on his meet? How, how would you analyze his performances? Um, I mean, I think, obviously, he's been swimming so well. Um, it was funny because, like, I was, like, after my heart was pounding for the 100 breaths, like, out of my chest pounding. Did you and expect him to go out that fast? Did you know he was going to do that? I thought he was going to go out fast. Okay. Yeah. I knew he was going to go out fast. I think he went out too hard. Like, I don't think it was, like, I don't think the time was too fast. He just did it too hard. Um, I knew he was going to go out. But I was like, man, I thought I was done being nervous for you. And he was like, I <laughs> thought I was done being nervous for me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think he's just, like, having a great time with it. Um, and he's just, like, I mean, even if he is nervous, he's so much more relaxed in his swimming now. Um, and I think that's, like, what's really coming through in his races. It seems like it. Yeah, it seems like he's found a good middle ground. Whatever he's doing seems to be working. Yeah. Uh, I think he really thought if he had, like, if he executed his race right, he could have been 57 in the 100 breasts. But I think going 57 on the relay was that, yes, no, the day before yesterday, I think mm -hmm. that was, like, felt a little bit of a re redemption for him. Mm -hmm. um, so I think he felt good about that. That's awesome. Um, so, and Nick and Mel are going, are going to be seeing Lydia in Alaska mm -hmm. later, later in the summer. Am I right about that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I talked to your mom for like 20 minutes yesterday. She saw that. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sh shout out to Leslie Jacoby. She is the best. Yeah. So why, why, why are you and Nick taking a trip up to Alaska? Can you so I guess what Lydia was it your club team won like a <laughs> national team member or something? Yeah, our club team is like one of the top fundraisers for our uh, like size or something for swimathon. Um, so yeah, we like won to have a national teamer come up. Yeah, so they yeah. had Nick, and Nick was like, I don't really know about going to Alaska. Like that's really far away. Yeah. And so he kept being like iffy about it. And then they were like, well, Mel can come. And I was like, Nick, I want to go. And he was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so now, now there's going to be a, a full on national team clinic in Alaska, which is awesome. Yeah. It'll be fun. I'm excited for you guys to come. Yeah. It'll be good. Yeah. I was asking your mom, I was like, is Lydia going to be like, like, I was, like, cause I assume like, if you're there, you would be like with me and Nick, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't think I need to like do a clinic with Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think I, 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 I'll probably be helping or something. I don't really know. My yeah, mom's or the organizer and I just follow. <laughs> I do think it's a great, juxtaposition of Lydia's team winning a visit from a national team member when they have an Olympic champion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were joking about that when we won. I was like, watch USA Swimming ask me. Just make it a cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't happen. <laughs> Honestly, from what I've like seen so far in the um planning process it does seem like it's a very expensive time of it year. is yeah summer yeah. is very expensive in alaska and it's also like i guess like anywhere but it's really hard to find like places to stay in cars and stuff yeah that's so also what i've been here yeah but yeah. you guys will be fine obviously <laughs> <laughs> oh i hope so <laughs> Nick better bring a tent with him. <laughs> Dude, camping in Alaska would be pretty intense. I mean, you there's there's like you you see bears and moose there pretty frequently, right? Yeah. 
Have but you ever you gone camping it. there, Lydia? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have. It's you just you just don't bring your food in the tent. Like you put it somewhere else. Put it in the tree. You tie it up, don't you? No. <laughs> no you put it in a bear box. I'm sorry, you put your food in a bear box, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I watch I watch you know, life on life at sub zero. I know what you do. <laughs> Super accurate. No. Life, wait, did you say life below zero? Life below zero, right? Whatever that show is, whatever. Yeah. There's like, like five thousand shows on Alaska. I've watched them all. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not tell you the last show that I watched <laughs> last week. But Coleman probably knows what it is. But I'm not going to say it. That was a Come huge. On, well, now you have to. Mel's a huge Aliens fan. I watched <laughs> Aliens in Alaska, and I love that show. And, and by the way, the last episode was Aliens, you know, Alien sightings in Seward, Alaska. And I was like, I wonder if Lydia's seen, you know, seen anything in the skies. I, but I was trying not to ask it. Now, now I'm asking the question, Lydia, have you ever seen anything? No, I don't think so. I'll have it's to so keep my eyes peeled now that I'm aware. It's so disappointing because we're not alone. <laughs> uh, Gretchen, have you ever been to Alaska? I have not been to Alaska before. I think it'd be a cool place to visit, though. Yeah, I'll have to do wonder, like a national team. Trip I want to see those lights. <laughs> what are they called? The Northern the, Lights. Yeah. <laughs> Mel, do you watch uh, Stranger Things? Do I, I, yes, I wa I binge watched it all. The, the okay, final good. episodes are coming out July first. Yeah. I'm a fan. Yes. I, are you a fan? I am a fan. Close Wait, to my heart. So it's already coming out? The, so, uh, it's like part two of season four. It's like the last two episodes. Netflix does this stupid thing where they don't just give you everything all at once. They like hang on to the, like, you know, they split the seasons wow. in two. They did, it, they did it with Ozark. They're doing it with Stranger Things. Makes me bitter, but I'm going to be, I'll, I will see it the day it comes out. I was so confused when I watched it. Like I watched like the last episode and I was like, that doesn't seem like a season finale. <laughs> and it took me like a couple days to like realize. Yeah, I love that's it. Disappointing. This final um, season's delivered too. It's it was a little bit scary. It scared me a little bit. I can't bring myself to watch it ever since they killed off Billy because he was the only reason I watched it. Billy is it, my profile picture on Netflix. So this is, what you guys, this is what you need to know about exactly. Coleman. Coleman, Coleman. Coleman literally had Billy's hairstyle, designed it. It was like, this is missing. Like, he wanted to achieve this. He, like, he, he has a special stylist. And, uh, and he did. He had, that, he had that hairstyle for like a year. That's what I was going to say. Like, I feel like there was a period where Coleman looked like Billy. <laughs> and that was purposeful. That was 100% on purpose. Uh because, because Billy's hot. Let's see. I, episode one of season two, I was like, dude, that guy knows what's up. <laughs> We're parading uh, our first flight of the men's semis, 50 free. I know nothing about sprint freestyle. I'm glad Gretchen's here. <laughs> Here's the thing. I, it's like, I, I don't, I mean, I, I don't understand how sprinting works. It's like it just never happened. My vertical leap's about this high. Uh, it feels like it would feel so stressful. Any mistake you make, it, it's so consequential. I feel like in short course, there's like a lot more room for error. and But there is like no room for error at the same time. Like you can't make a mistake, but there's so many. Like the wall kind of can throw people off. Long course, it's just go, you know? No... No thinking, no breathing, no nothing, just sprint. Mel, I know that technically there is a sprint group at Georgia. Sorry, Melanie. But uh, were you ever a part of it? Did you ever get to go to sprint group? Um, yeah. Actually, one time, I was going to say the past <laughs> but I was past year. But one time in um, 2021, I got to do a Monday threshold in sprint group. Was it everything you'd ever imagined? 
Um, I mean, it was pro. I mean, it was kind of hard. So, <laughs> I, not that I don't think that sprinters do hard things. I just <clears throat> like some of the sprinters that we have. Um, like it was really like I don't know if you guys know Dylan Downing. It was really interesting to see him on a threshold set because the dude is like one 100 free. Like there's no like doing 100 free and then doing, which I hate to say that. If he ever hears, I'm sorry I said it. <laughs> you know, so like just like witnessing him do threshold was interesting. <laughs> You threw him under the bus. We appreciate that. Go for it. It's, all, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Sometimes I'm too honest. <laughs> That's okay. We like honesty. Who's whoa, whoa, who, who, wow. first flight? Ben Proud, 21 4 2. It's a good swim. Josh oh. Liendo was second coming off the 100 fly. That kid just really impresses me. Uh, but yeah, Ben Proud missed the podium in the 50 fly. So I'm guessing he's looking for a good one here in the 50 free. 21-4 is a solid swim. Yeah. I was, I was a little surprised that we saw a bunch of 21-7s this morning, but that was the – I thought there might be a little more speed, but maybe we'll see it tonight. Um, I mean, I'd got, like to be inside Michael Andrews' head right now because, you know, Trussell pulled out. It's, uh, I think he, he's, he's got to be so focused on this. It's, it almost surprised me that he didn't pull out of the 100 fly just to focus on the 50 free. I mean, like, I you don't know. I would like try to be world champion. Yeah. Um, well, if he makes it through the men's 50 free final, is first tomorrow night. Oh, yeah, I actually remember that because that was why it was so crazy. Um, what year is that? 2017 when like Caleb did the 50 and then the 100 fly and it's 100 fly was so fast. And we were like, wait, he already like he did a 50 free. Like imagine how good he really could be. Yeah. <laughs> he just went 21-1. Yeah. Yeah, so. Every bleed on the run up to this world championships, we were all like a lot of people were, were trying to gauge where where Dressel was going to perform the best, and everyone was everyone's feeling was it's the fifty free. They were like, I a lot of people were saying world record fifty free. Really, and I, and I couldn't get my head around that. Uh, I thought maybe hundred free, but it's uh, I couldn't get my head around the fifty free. But without him. Yeah. Very interesting because uh, after practice, some of the guys were we were at breakfast. Some of the guys were talking about Dressel, and one of them said, like they were talking about what he was swimming and everything. And one of them was like, "Yeah, uh, I just think he's not that good at sprinting." And so he was like, "I don't think that he's, like doing as well in the fifty free as he could. Like if he just focused on the fifty free." And one of the kids goes. But he is good at sprinting. <laughs> <laughs> like That's a pretty hot take. He's not good at swim at sprinting. We're all screwed. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> he was just saying, like, he was like Caleb trains to do so much, whereas he is solely focused on the fifty free. Like, basically, like the world record would be over for. But like, it's hard, like, what for to do everything. But I mean, I wouldn't put it. Put them put it past him like no matter what <laughs> that's a good point um yeah obviously i think it's fair to say he's at least okay it's it's printing yeah <laughs> <clears throat> if someone asked about an update on his health uh, i think it was nick h we're asking the right people he's going to make a statement here pretty soon guys i think we're going to hear from him and find out what's going on he'll his agent will release a statement for sure probably by next week or so. Um, it's interesting because he has a camp planned in the middle of July and it's fire that, whoa. Did a 21.7 just win that heat? I'm not sure. Yep, it sure did. 21.7 Lorenzo Zazzeri of Italy. 
That's pretty surprising. What what do we got here? <clears throat> uh, you had told me a 21-7 would win the second heat of the semis at World Championships. I would have said, you're a liar. I'll bet my house you're wrong. Uh, 21-7 is what we see on like the first. Good thing no one asked you then. It's like, that's, <laughs> a, that's, like, that's like the first pro swim of the season winning time. I, I don't know. That's Hold on a sec. So Michael Andrew tied for fifth. Uh, Benjamin Proud's obviously top seed at 21-4. There's a tie for eighth between Maxime Grissett and Bruno Fratis at 21-8. Uh, and if Bruno goes another 21 in that swim-off, that will be his 100th time going 21 in his career in the 53. Great for Bruno, but Bruno's got to be disappointed with that with that swim. Yeah, I don't I, – yeah, I would think he's not – Exceedingly pleased with yeah. the twenty-one-eight. I've got a theory on this. I got a theory. The theory is that that when when Caleb said I'm I'm, I'm punching out, I'm heading back home for medical reasons. Everyone was mourning, and they were they were sad. <laughs> and they're like, fine. Could be wrong. Could be the wrong theory. But uh, yeah, that was a that was a slow heat. Or everyone got too excited. Because they thought they had a chance, and then uh, it's really messed everyone up. Being like, "Oh God, I I can I really can like win now." <laughs> wow, yeah, that makes more sense. The Coming from a coach, we'll, we'll we'll take your opinion. <laughs> so that's yeah, weird fifty free. Who? <laughs> Who knows that we're going to have a swim off, which, I mean, that's exciting. Um, Gretchen, as a sprinter, when you see those heats, what stand, what, what thing stands out to you? Um, especially seeing the men's 50 free. Um, like in terms of just technical guess, things or? Yeah. Technical things. Um, what do you notice that, that, in the men's 50 free that maybe doesn't happen in a women's 50 free or, or what do you look for in terms of technique and race strategy <laughs> if there is any race strategy in that 50? well i like i really like watching their starts because i feel like they like fly off the blocks um and that's like something i like look up to and i wish i could do um and i'm working on it but um i think that's like really amazing but also no matter like how close it is, it just looks like it's all so close at the finish. Like even that race, it just looked like everyone was like within a tenth of each other. And I think it's really interesting how like a men's 50 free, like every single time without fail, it looks like they could all tie for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think like a big thing like people don't really think about in the 50 free is like how you have to accelerate to the end. Um, like there has to be like a gear shift somewhere. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see like where people put that shift. Where do you put it? I try to put it at the 15 meter mark. No, you don't, you can't, what if, what if people are listening? Well, it's like right before you start like losing your <laughs> you tempo your and then you. While you're in your prime. <laughs> listen to Mel, uh, well, listen to Mel. <laughs> My secret's out. <laughs> I'm actually really excited to watch. This is Kate's. This is Kate Doug's big race. This is oh, the we're changing, we're, we're changing the topic to bring up, take it away from the secrets. Okay, so so we got two breaststrokers and we got a teammate. So I want to hear it from everyone. Call this race now. Who's 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 touching first? Well, wait, what did? Uh, Kate go in prelims at uh, trials. Do you know? I don't know. Cause uh, I can pull was, it up. Because she was 23 and semis here, right? Uh, prelims, she was 224.4 at trials. At team trials. At team trials. Finals, she was 221.4. Four. That's a big draft. It's like what? <laughs> it's a lot of talent. And Lily was two twenty one one. 
Uh, we got confirmation from Cody yesterday that Lily did have COVID uh, before training camp, uh, about I think about 10 days out from the start of the meet. And so she's kind of been coming back from that. Um, uh, I'm not hearing predictions though. What do you, what? I, I mean, I'll go, I'll go Kate to win it. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I, I, I love her brushstroke. I think it's like, I, it's beautiful to watch. And I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go Kate. Yeah. I could okay. see, I could definitely see Kate winning this. She looked really good. Lily, obviously her hundred wasn't what she normally swims, but her semifinal in the 200 looked pretty good. So we'll see what she does. And I also think the two Brits could do really well. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I, thing, if you, yeah, if you'd said Kate was going to win the 200 rush or world championships, I would have said you're crazy. But it seems like it's a possibility now. I mean, uh -huh. she did break Lily's record short course. Do you, uh, Gretchen, I don't know how much breaststroke you do with Kate, but uh, <laughs> do you think her breaststroke is better long course or short course? Um, I've been seeing her do a lot of long course breaststroke recently, and like that woman can go 111s in practice every single day, like without fail. Um, I've that's pretty impressive, so I feel like I'd say long course, but. Her breaststroke, short court, I don't even know. Like, it's so good. And I think, like, it helps everyone on our team because there is a big, like, 200 breaststroke group. Um, mm -hmm. And she's, she's the head of the pack. I mean, like, she she paces what some people pace their backstroke, their 200 backstroke. So um, it's really impressive. Yeah. Ooh. Where you got, where's and your just got to the 100. <laughs> And, and it's obviously our commenters are about a minute ahead of us. Uh, yeah. It's a tight race. The Molly Renshaw of Great Britain looks really good. Yeah. Uh, Kate's right there. The Australian yeah, worries me out of lane four. She had a really good semi and really came alive at the end. It's a close race for a 200. It is close. Yeah. I mean, there's what, five, six, maybe even seven people who are all in contention at yeah. the 150. Yeah. Our, con our comments are right. Yeah. Kate was first at the 150. Yeah. So, what happened? What does I'm King a little do? Behind. Here? What does King <laughs> do on this final 50? Check it out. We got to get her split. She's moving. She is moving. Ooh. Oh, my God. Kate's moving. Lily is moving. Australia is. is moving. Australia is moving. There goes Lily. Lily, yeah. Uh, oh, surging. 20. I'm, not, I'm trying not to spoil it, but. That is right. Cody called it yesterday. Oh. Cody said she's going to win yesterday. Wow. That's really good for her. Kings That's her first. Back on top. That's her first title, right? In the 200? Yeah. I think ever? that's her first medal at a world's in a 200. I guess she medaled last summer. She medaled uh, in the Olympics, but. Yeah. So 36, 36 in the last 50. 222. So she wins it. First world title in that. Yeah. I think first. Good world for title. her. That's a yeah. really good really comeback. Kate. Yeah. And Kate gets third. I think she's really happy to like be on the podium. I think that's a big deal for her, especially in yeah. a race like that. No kidding. Yeah, especially in a race where everyone was so tightly bunched. So close. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Have you guys, have either of you had COVID and like recovered from it and have some experience about training after you've had it? How you feel? I've never gotten it yet. Okay. I had COVID uh, in January. Uh, a couple of weeks after Abu Dhabi, because um, I got sent from home from Abu Dhabi because I was a close contact, but I didn't actually get it there, and then I got it a couple of weeks later. Um, but it wasn't bad at all, honestly. The only reason I tested was because I knew one of my friends had it, um, but I wasn't even really sick or anything. Um, 
So I just isolated for five days and it was um, just a little break and then I got right back in for it. Cody said it. Cody said that that Lily was feeling it. So he said it hurt her. She was. She was. Her symptoms were pretty rough. Definitely, I think it like varies for people. Yeah, because yeah, I had it in January this year too, and like, I was in Florida with my parents, and I just kept thinking I had allergies at first because my nose was stuffy, but my dad had COVID pretty bad. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll test. And I did have it. So, but yeah, like for me, it wasn't bad either. I just had to stay out of the water for a few days, maybe what, five to seven days or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like if you're actually sick, probably a little bit, probably a little bit different. Especially, yeah. because, I mean, it's like, think about like when everyone's sick. But, like, people just, like, keep swimming, you know? But, mm -hmm. like, this thing where, like, you're sick and they're, like, no, you can't swim. So, I feel like it's almost like a double whammy there. Not that yeah, because then you have, like, the week <laughs> off to get back from and the, like, sickness. Yeah. One of yeah. our commenters, WaterBear13, just asked, you know, what did Cody call? He called, yeah, he called that first 50 and the last 50. He said that he was, like, his uh, king's strategy – messes messes with people's minds and that's what you did in that race um cody was supposed to drop in today he, he's i think he's moved into a new house and he's um when he was on the <laughs> he was like he, it looked like they were putting his house together as he was as he was on the stream he was jumping on and off cody had to go to a funeral today oh that's right yeah he had a relative pass away that's right i forgot that he sent yeah. that email but uh yeah. He's here in spirit, and I'm sure he's excited for Lily. Oh, he watched that race, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, well, I have to pop off, actually. So this might be a good time. But thank you guys so much for having me on. This was fun. Thank, thank you. you for coming on, Gretchen. See you It's great seeing you. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> oh, is my <laughs> next? Men's two back is next. Ooh. I think I'll just, I was like, I was surprised with Murph yesterday. You were surprised? Way? Yeah. Like, yeah, because I thought he was saying that, I thought I had heard he said he was focusing on the hunter back this year. Hmm. Is what I thought someone told me. So you know, 5197. To, for, you know, to get the silver, it's a you know, getting under fifty two is is that's 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 great. It is like he's focusing. I think I, I think a, a fifty one nine seven hundred meter back is way better than his seed time of a one fifty five four three. I don't know. I would I would say that for him to go a fifty one nine seven, I would, he needs to be one fifty four low. If if those are in, you know, in terms of what he's done in the past, so I don't. His 200 back didn't seem crazy fast, but it also looked like he was totally controlled and he was doing just what he needed to do to, yeah. to qualify. Yeah. Well, and he's so far ahead of the pack. I mean, him and Rylov for, for the last few years really have been so far ahead of everyone else in the world in the 200 back that I think he runs away with this. I mean, he's got so much experience in the event. He's got, it seems like he has a mastery that no one else has. I mean, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm calling. I think he runs away with it. I, I, I was really hoping to, I think Sean Cassis just being here, Shane Cassis just being here is, is, a, is a big step forward for him. He's pretty raw talent. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering, did, did, was he fading? He, did he fade on that final 50? Uh, he did. He took it out really fast and then like the last 15 meters. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. Someone, uh, one of our previews wrote that he that he was sh he shut it down, and I'm like, I don't know if he shut it down. It might have been a little bit of a fade. Yeah, I mean, Shane in his interview afterwards said that he died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so he's yeah. so competitive. I don't think he'd shut it down if he was ahead. <laughs> so hopefully he can uh, he can adjust his race strategy a little for today. 
That's so tough, though. I mean, you, it, it's, it's, it, I feel like you have to get out strong. You know, you got to get out with easy speed. We don't know. He might, he might, um, he might be able to get out just as fast and be relaxed. Yeah. Because we, we all know what that's like to, to go out fast and, it, and, you're, and you're pushing it and everything feels off and you pay for it. And just a slight tweak can, can change that around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Melanie, would you ever swim tuner back in season? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, growing up, like, I would do, like, tuner die and tuner back was kind of my thing until I went to Georgia. Hmm. I did a lot really? of tuner in Georgia, though. But, we did do a lot of tuner backs with Georgia. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Huh. So you're a tuner backstroker. So you know this event. My best time isn't that bad. I mean, it's like back from 2013. <laughs> but it's not that bad considering <laughs> considering everything. Considering that's what people say is my work. Uh-huh. What do you go on tuner back? 212. Long first? Yeah. yeah. That's not that bad. No, that's, that's legit. Really good. That's legit swim. That's really fast. From I mean, ten I years ago. Like, that's Olympic trials, right? <laughs> We're in the. I'm in the water. I, I'm sure our, our 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 folks commenting are a minute ahead of us. I'm in the water. Ryan Murphy's already winning. <laughs> this isn't even a contest. I would think I would think that Murph is gonna Murph's gonna cruise for 150 meters and then crush it on the last 50 just to just to swim for the medal. I mean, I think that's what. I, I but I think that's what he always does. Like he always comes off the last wall really strong. Um, Shane's out fast, which I like. I hope mm -hmm. I hope he he's going out a little easier. And can hold on. Merce head so just stationary, laid way back, so smooth, great rotation. Um, Melanie, what 200 do you think is the most painful long course? <laughs> Tuner back. 100%. Really? No question. <laughs> right? Because it why? Is. Tuner back it's, sucks. It's, Tuner back hurts so bad. It's all drive. Are my heroes. I literally don't know how they do this. Like, I mean, the pain of the tuner back is something else. But granted, I've never done a tuner fly long course. But I don't think that it seems Ever. all that hard. <laughs> tuner meter back is worse. Tuner meter back is worse than tuner meter fly. Murph is Murph's taken over. He was out in a 55 mm -hmm. 47 on the 100. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah. Uh, Shane still looks like he's. Oh, Shane could win a medal. Maybe I won't, maybe I won't speak. Yeah, I think like Shane will hold on. Yeah, I think metal contention. Come on, buddy. Oh, that would be great for his brain. Come on, man. Yeah, he's got it. Woo! Nice. Murphy for the win, and Shane's got a medal. One, That's great. Two, four, five, U.S. went two, one three in both those last two events. Nice. <clears throat> we're stupid. about to do That's it. First, this is first two hundred. This is first world championship gold medal. Yes, individually. Individually, yeah. People, um, don't, you, people don't know that, you know. It's, you, 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 you. Yeah, Murphy never won an individual world title until now. That's really? right. 16, you 100, 200 back, and you just sort of take it for granted that he's won a world medal, but that's his first world gold individually. Good for nice. him. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's might be a best time, too. No, he's been a 153. You're right. I'm sorry. Yep. He went a 153 at the 2018 Pan. When everybody was swimming yeah. really slowly, he pops off these great swims. Mm. I'll be right uh, he swims fast on even years. Someone made that comment, and I'm like, you know what? I think you're right. <laughs> uh, actually, it was so funny. At Panpax in 2018, Leah Smith was like, Mel, go on this Swim Slam article and read the comments. Like, you will think they're hilarious. And it was tons of people just saying, send Team USA home. They're all terrible. The only person... <laughs> 
or be like, and it was just comment after comment of that, of like, send everyone home except for Ryan Murphy. <laughs> oh my God. Well, what, I, I, what did Shane go? What did, did you see Shane's time? Well, what is it? He's got it up here. 55.3. 55.3? 55, yeah. Yep. That's a PB, isn't it? He's, it was a 55.4 before, wasn't it? You're more of a swimmer than I am today, Mel. I guess. Second, I'll pull it up. Um, the great swim for USA all around. Ryan Murphy doing it again. <laughs> I love that, that Leah was such a good teammate to show you an article where everyone was just dogging on you. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, if you're an elite and you're an elite swimmer, I wouldn't read the comments. Oh no, I I stay far away from that. <laughs> Those comments can be brutal. Uh, yeah, so so his so yeah, that was the best time. So he he got a PB by one tenth. His one fifty five four six was his PB at, at World Trials. Nice. So good for him. Uh, I would like to know what he did differently between that semi and the final because that, you know he faded i would like to know what he did what what the change was i assume it's just maybe. being relaxed yeah i mean maybe he was just nervous for the semis yeah um and it just kind of zapped him but um melanie how what 2018 pan packs how what was your experience like there it was in Tokyo, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's like, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I think that was a pretty fun meet. I mean, that was the only time I've ever meddled in the 4 a.m. Or like, that was like my first time ever doing it long course, like at a meet. Mm -hmm. Um, or I guess my only time, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, I mean, I thought it was fun. I think the team was pretty fun. Um, I can't really remember. I like wish I had written more stuff down about like all the meets I've been to. I actually had a crisis about that recently. Just, a crisis? Yeah. A 3 a.m. crisis. And I tried to tell Nick, I was like, because Nick had gotten up to go to the bathroom. I was like, Nick. <laughs> Didn't respond. I was like, oh, man, I guess I'll just have this crisis by myself. So funny. But, and, the, and the crisis was that you didn't write. I, I hear this from a lot of people that you didn't write enough down about, you know, the teams or the team trips or the travel that you do as an elite. Yeah. Yeah, well, mine was because we were at his parents' house and they have the bedding from Tokyo Olympics. And I was like, so, so I'm like, that's what I'm sleeping under. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't even remember what my bedding looked like in Rio. And I was like, I don't have any pictures of my room and I don't have any pictures of any meat. Why didn't I take any pictures of any? There's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot of research and science behind the fact that we take so many pictures and videos and and we document so much that it's actually bad for our brains that it's it's better if we just sit quietly and because it's there you have it there you just you just have the neural pathways you have to you have to build a connection back to them and it's better for your mental health if, if you live that way rather than documenting everything all the time well, I'm going to be golden then because <laughs> I am I am the worst at pictures. Wow. So you didn't you didn't take any pictures on your trips. Were you were you asking teammates like feverishly if they had if they had pictures they could share with you? I keep meaning to reach out to Haley and because I'm like, I yeah, I keep meaning to reach out to Haley and ask her if she has any pictures because yeah. The only trip I wrote down anything was 2013 WUGS. I wrote in a journal every day. After that, I got nothing. <laughs> you did it for one meet and you're like, this is terrible. <laughs> <Overrated>. <laughs> yeah. 
And then, there, and then there's this Caleb Dressel. Caleb Dressel has like a has a stack of, of notebooks, just massive, and it's just he yeah. documents everything. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, he writes things down about every practice. I think. Um, okay, we got fit, women's fifty fly semis. Tori, Sarah Showstrom, both in the water. Obviously, we need Showstrom to move on. <laughs> because swim swim fantasy draft oh and obviously she will jeez Tori Husk gets second wow good for her Tori is tough yeah Tori like is so intense like seeing her behind the blocks makes me because she's so intense behind the blocks but it works for her <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what her time was. Her so, Tori's PB is a twenty-five six eight. What did she go in this heat? I don't know. Uh, I think they'll show it in a minute. Yeah, I don't think it's come up yet. <clears throat> um, Melanie, she, what what kind of athlete are you behind the blocks? Oh, I'm like if 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 somebody was next to me, I'm chatting. I'm smiling. I'm looking around. I'm taking in the crowd. I'm doing anything besides focusing on what I'm about to do. <laughs> Same. I love talking in the ready room. Yeah. And if people won't talk with me, I'll just like talk at them. <laughs> so Tori, Tori, Tori just broke the American record. 25-3H. You just took it from Claire. Claire, it used to be a 20. So you, it was a 25-4-9 from Team Trials. Tori just popped a 25-3-8. Now, now we get the response yeah, in the next team. Yeah, gets to fire back. She gets to fire back. That's Here's the thing. You're, you're, you're standing back there watching your teammate break your American record. How resilient are you? That's a, <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever seen – Mel, have you ever seen your teammate break your record? Mel Stewart. Have you no, ever seen your that never happened. Record? Never happened. Not once. But I, there's so many stories. You, know, you talk to, you go back and you talk to a bunch of old, uh, older Olympians and national team members, and they're like, "Yeah, they're like where they're they're standing. They have a world record, and then they're standing behind the block, and somebody break, you know, breaks it right in front of them. That happens a lot of trials. Yeah, I can imagine not the best feeling, but I wouldn't know. Someone famously, uh, like three or four CEOs of Speedo ago, uh, what was his name? Kurt Krumpholtz, uh, broke. He broke like the world record in the 400 free, and then like it, it lasted four minutes because it's like the next flight they broke it again. That's crazy. Yeah, that's brutal. That was a world record holder for four minutes. <laughs> Man, those were the days. We don't have that anymore. I don't think we've had something like that since 2009. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's that's very common anymore. <laughs> we don't see world records just go down willy-nilly. Yeah. I was I was at the 2009 World Championships in Rome and they you know they had they blew the horn, they made the loud noises and it got to a point where it was it was weird, and people were kind of walking around going, "This is meaningless. World records are meaningless because it's like people would fall in the water and it'd be a world record." <laughs> That's Someone so would slip off the blocks. World record. It's what it was like. It, it was like that. It was uh, it was a world record every time somebody swam because they were wearing uh, the suits were. I love those suits though. I thought those suits looked so cool. The space suits. Okay. We, uh, the condom suits. Mm -hmm. uh, so Matthew in 2019, oh yeah, Matthew Wilson right tied the world record in the tuner breast semi, and then Anton Shubkov broke it in the final. So that yeah, I, I mean I think that counts. Um, that was a good one, and now we and now we've seen that world record fall again within the past. I mean it just got broken, but. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that old to begin with. I feel like that event is one event where people can definitely, it, it, it's going to keep, keep getting lowered for a while. 
All right, what do we got? We're in the water. I'm at the 25. Yeah. Who has that uh, out ahead? Lane five, which is Melanie Hanique of France. Claire. Claire's looking pretty good. Claire, Claire touched four. four. Let's see if she made it. Ooh, she did. She's seven. So Claire's through, Zhang Yifei's through, Farida Osman's through, Melanie Hanique, Tori Husk, Sarah Shostrom's top seed. Man, when is that world record going to get broken? Maybe never. 24-43 by Sarah Shostrom. That's ridiculous. Do you, do you guys so think you could do that freestyle? Because I don't. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if, if either of you could, you would be swimming the 50 free. That's like a really fast 50 free time. I didn't even. Know yeah. If, if I could go a 24 4 in the 50 free, I would be at practice right now. I wouldn't be sitting in my office. <laughs> Claire Curzan, that was a PB. So she went a 25 6 7. I thought. You said that Wait, her, her record, record was, four, that was four. Four. She's two tenths off. I'm sorry. I switched them up. I'm looking at my notes. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, that's still that's, that's still a great that's still a great semi swim. Still good, that's still a good swim. Yeah. So yeah, you, you're touching less than two tenths off your PB. That's we'll, we'll give you some. We'll give you props. Yeah. Look at Tori. She's happy. All she all she. I mean. She oh, got a medal tonight. Well, yeah. Wow, that's pretty good vibes right there. Wait, say that again, Melanie. Claire's my half birthday twin. <laughs> <laughs> I bet we're like, wow. I bet we're actually kind of connected. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read your horoscope before you came on the on the stream? Is that what I'm hearing? Hey, my horoscope for right now means like I like I got good things going on right now in life. All right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're on you're on the swim swim live stream, so obviously something's working for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, someone comments that I think Showstrom said her twenty four four is one of her favorite achievements in her career. I hope so, because man, it's a pretty good one. Okay, enough with the fifty fly. Time for the real event again. Mm -hmm. Two hundred breast. Oh man, back at it. <laughs> okay, Melanie, where would you say Nick's two hundred breast is compared to his hundred and fifty? Um, in Nick's mind, which is probably the most important place, um, uh -huh. not in the same playing field. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's the one that he was most nervous about because he thought that would be. He was just nervous about doing three of them. Yeah. I think if it was just prelim final, he'd feel better about it. But I think he was a little nervous about having to do three turn press strokes, which is yeah. silly. Fair. It's silly because like that <laughs> like it's a valid concern. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's well, I mean, we'll see. we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I would just think but Seven? No. He won that at Short Course Worlds, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dobby, Dobby, yeah. Prelims finals. No semis. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Nixon lane one. Um, he went 209 2 in semis. Uh, I mean, I would just think as it like his his focus was not as much on swimming this year, right? With with going back to school. I mean, I would think the first event that it, that that would take a toll on would be the 200, especially if you're doing three of them. But if you think that it's silly for him to <laughs> be scared of three 200s, I'm in your boat. <laughs> Nick, come on, just- Honestly, I think Nick's kind of like, uh, Lindsay was like, come on, Nick, like, 
ties don't help this roster because you know they're like dramatic early on in the meet like oh is everyone like are we gonna have enough roster space and uh, nick's like i would love to get knocked off and turn a breaststroke like let me be a 50 100 guy <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Husk said that she breathed every other stroke in the 50 fly. That's interesting. And she broke an American record. I mean, at the same time, like, if that's what her, like, rhythm is, if that's mm -hmm. how she trained her rhythm, then probably, yeah, probably works that's a out. Good <laughs> that's a good point if she can yeah if if that's what her stroke is then yeah uh, yeah it's probably fine <clears throat> melanie did you watch the 800 free relay yesterday yeah <laughs> as as a former member of that relay uh what did, what did you think of that one i mean that was great holy cow because i'm like looking at i'm <laughs> looking at the prelims and then i'm looking at the what they set it up for finals and i'm thinking they must know something I don't know because I was like after prelims and after Claire swims, I was thinking like they would have gone with Alex or Haley maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. but they clearly knew something that I didn't know. Like I thought her lead off was great. Um, I mean, that was the best time for her. And like yeah. <laughs> what in the Bella Sims? <laughs> yeah seriously i mean I'm crazy like i mean i just want to know like what like i mean now i just like i'm thinking back to like trials it like in april and i'm like how did she not get that second spot you know <coughs> Like yeah. being on a relay makes you better, but it doesn't make you that much better. It doesn't, <laughs> you don't drop seconds on seconds just because it's a relay. Um, so yeah, that was, that. I thought they did really well on that relay. Yeah, that was incredible. If that relay, well, I guess we still have some relays coming up, but that one's definitely would be a clear top choice for relay of the year this year. For golden goggles, I, yeah. In my mind, I agreed. So far in the meet, I think that that definitely tops it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, for Claire to go one fifty six plus on the lead off, and then yeah, for Bella to be one fifty seven at trials, one fifty five nine on the anchor in prelims, one fifty four six, one fifty four eight. Yeah, on the anchor in finals, it's like. What are they feeding you? Yeah. <laughs> My mind was blown. All right. Uh, unfortunately, I got to run because I got a meeting with the boss now. But thanks for having me. Guys. During Nick's 200 breasts, are you going to have, have the race up and be like, sorry, I got it? Yeah, honestly, I might bring my laptop with me. But <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for popping in, Melanie. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye -bye. <clears throat> All right, Lydia. Yeah. Are you can you call this tuna breast for us? What do you think? I mean, I don't think anybody's gonna beat the Australian. <laughs> like it just won't happen. Just He's got too happen. much like easy speed. Like what was he like a half second off his world record, <laughs> a second off his world record in the semifinals, yeah, and he didn't even look like he was breathing hard. <laughs> so I'd say that it's an easy win for him with a world record with the world record yeah touche i can't i can't even say no to that <laughs> um that's i mean that's it right do you think do you think nick gets a medal he could i guess like i i would have said yes before hearing from melanie but after she said like like if his head's not in it then no but like if he can like be like okay yeah i'm done with my other bench so i don't have like anything to hold back so mm -hmm. i guess it just depends where his head's at because i think like physically he can but when, when where was your head at when you swam 
one of your best 200 breaststrokes? Um, my best 200 breaststroke was actually at Mare Nostrum a couple weeks ago. Um, okay. And it was just, I was just having fun with it. Like, it was just like an easy, or not an easy meet, but like, just like a fun meet. There wasn't any of the pressure. Um, and also, I think I was like second or third going into finals, which like for me in the 200 breast, I never won a 200 breast outside of Alaska. Um, like my, I think I got fifth place at trials and that was the best I had ever um, like placed. So just like having that confidence boost. And then at the end, I was like, I'm competitive, so if I think I can win, like, I'm going to try harder. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. Made me Glad like it a little bit better, but then I swam it the next week and went really slow, so now we're back. <laughs> <laughs> <It's like, laughs> um, did, you, did you like the format of Marinostrum just in terms of having that back-to-back -back racing and getting to mm – -hmm. what do you feel – how do you feel like that benefited you? I love doing stuff like that. Like, if I could just race and not train, I 100% would. So stuff like Marinostrum, like, suits me really well. I think, like, ISL would as well, especially if it's long course. But, um, yeah, I have a lot of fun with it. And it's just, like, lower pressure racing, which is fun. I mean, that, that, that seems like a really great way to enjoy the sport. And like you said, get a lot of good racing in with, um, as we've said, a lot of top level competition. There were, uh, especially the, the women's breaststroke fields, there were so many top level athletes there. Yeah, it was fast. <clears throat> and it was fun uh, because it's not like Worlds or the Olympics or something to just, like everybody's more relaxed and like just there to have fun. So it's fun to kind of get to know everyone. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just like be goofy. Be able to be able to interact with the athletes. That's really nice. Um, mm -hmm. And again, yeah, it's like I, I talked to Bobby after his eight hundred. Bobby Fink after his eight hundred free gold at this meet. And yeah, I was like, "What's the ready room like with with all those distance guys?" He's like, "We, we don't really talk." So, <laughs> and yeah. you know, it's like again, you know, it's the it's the world championships. I think that's understandable. Everyone's pretty probably pretty focused in, but. And a meet like Marinostrum where you have all, all, a, a lot of the same competitors, but it's a much more relaxed field. It seems nice to actually be like, hey, you know, I've, I've, I've raced you for the last five years, but we've never talked. Yeah. There, there were two athletes. So we, we've been close to ready rooms. Media, sometimes media is situated close to a ready room. Mm -hmm. So, you, can, you know, you're watching and you're, you're trying to be respectful and keep your distance, but you kind of you're watching what's going on. There, yeah, there yeah. were two people that scared me to death. Like I would, I would, like, I did not want my gaze to cap you know, to cross their gaze. Uh -huh. Natalie Coglin and Michael Phelps. Your gaze catches their gaze when they're in the ready room, and it's like they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna take your head off. Uh -huh. That was like so focused, and tense, and uh, <laughs> I like that. Really? You like that? <laughs> oh yeah. I, 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 don't, think, I don't like to think about my race at all until I like start like until i they announce my name and i'm walking out like if i start thinking about it before that i just get so in my head mm. I, mean, I think that makes sense yeah i <laughs> it's fun i think i just love seeing everyone's how they handle it differently right like some some take your approach or like melanie's approach where they're just talking to everyone and, and chatting and then they kind of get in their zone at the end and then some take the Phelps Coglin approach where it's just like, do not even come close to me. Yeah. Nick's taking it out fast. <sighs> he's got the old man speed. Wow. He's in second <laughs> behind Casper Corbeau of the Netherlands and a Longhorn. <clears throat> you guys are ahead of me. Are you ahead? Is your, I'm at, they really? just turned for me. Oh, I'm at the 75. Yeah, I'm at the 75. Mm. Nick H, definitely scarier than Michael Gross, although I, Michael Gross almost made me want to cry back in 1988 when I was a little kid. I don't know who that is. Uh, he, he's someone's referencing in the comments about scary people in the ready room. <laughs> Nick, Nick H. 
Uh, Nick Fink was on world record pace at the 100. I think a lot of them are. Yeah. yeah they're bringing their A game. <laughs> um, Zach Stubbley Cook is way behind, but I mean, he's obviously he still is, but in the mix. His back half is so good. Look, he's already he's moving now. He's moving now. Uh, Fink, Fink seems like he's kind of out of it now. He's got to be 134.32. That's the world record pace. Mm -hmm. So Stubbley Cook's not that far behind, but... My uh, prediction's he... looking a little rough, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, here I comes I thought he's going to do it. Jesus. Oh, my God. I mean, he just rocketed. He just dropped yeah. into fifth gear and said, bye-bye. That's Whoa. amazing. Whoa. Wasn't he like eighth at the hundred wall? He wasn't. He was not in the top three. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I wonder how he feels about that time, though. Um, I don't. I, I think that when you get your world championship gold, it's sort of like I'm world champion. Yeah, he Stubbley, looks Stubbley Cook was eighth at the 50, eighth at the 100, third at the 150. 31 9 coming home. That's insane. That's, I, th I think that's leaving just a little bit too much in the tank. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think because he was out pretty slow. I mean, he was 102 4 at the 100. And he's been 59 mid or 59 low at this meet, um, you know, like this week. And so it seems like he, he was, he was being pretty conservative. You know what it's, um, we, we, we keep, we keep forgetting this and we got to look through the lens of the Commonwealth games. Commonwealth games matter. They matter if you're on, you know, swimming Australia and, uh, I wonder like where they are in terms of their training cycle. Like I'm, you know, mm -hmm. he's dropping this 207, but he might be like, this is, this is just a warm up meet. Yeah. And even like the race strategy, like being so conservative on the first half might just be like playing around with different stuff. That's true. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe he wanted negative split it, which he almost did. <laughs> That's so insane. Now, here's the thing, I do, I, I, Genevieve, I do think that a lot of the, a lot of the, um, a lot of the people in the Commonwealth countries are, they, they care about Commonwealth. It's, it's, yeah, it's, cool it's, it's a hard concept for Americans to wrap their heads around, but <clears throat> people like Commonwealth games <laughs> who yeah. are in the Commonwealth. It'll be fun to watch this year. This is the first year I've really paid attention to it. Does it happen every year? It happens every four years. So it's like the Olympics. Okay, yeah, it's like the Olympics, but obviously it's smaller, but it is a games. And uh, so it's like all these different sports and it happens like every, every even year. It's not the Olympics. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, it's, it's the countries that were in the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. What countries are in? So the big ones are like Australia, uh, the UK. Wow, there's a lot. South Africa is New Zealand. South Africa, New Zealand, um, a lot of a lot of island countries. Um, and I know for Britain, it's a big deal because like, if you live in Wales, you get to represent Wales, or if you live in Scotland or, or Northern Ireland, um, you get to represent those countries as opposed to just the United Kingdom. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So, and that's pretty, you know, that's one of the only times they get to do that. Um, mm -hmm. but in terms of swimming, yeah, it's like Trinidad and Tobago, South Africa, Singapore, New Zealand, Australia, um, all the all the, the United Kingdom, Canada, um, yeah. So all those countries will be at the Commonwealth Games. Final event of the day. 
Are we marching out for four by two? Yeah, we are. Yes. I didn't get the I didn't get the start list for this race. Um, I can pull it up. Can you shoot it to me? Well, no, that's because it wasn't out yet. Gotcha. <clears throat> Tori, American record is live. The unpacking on swim swim. The report just went live. Um, Lydia, have you ever been on a uh, eight hundred free relay? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe I like an age group meet, uh -huh. but probably not even because our team's just so small. We don't really have. Yeah. Realize, and if we did have one, we wouldn't focus on the four by two. <laughs> That's fair. So. That's fair. I swam this in '92, and we were the we we got bronze in 1992, and that was unheard of for Team USA to win a bronze. It was like the worst performance in 50 years, and there was so much shame around that. And now we're back. To where hey we just want to get back on the podium in the four by two it seems like yeah it in a weird way it's it's when team usa doesn't perform and and relays on on the on the global stage i almost get kind of excited because it creates such a great narrative it's just so much drama there's a lot of drama around relays a lot of drama that's the only place you ever get drama in swimming i feel like <laughs> Embrace the drama. Uh, which you got to experience in a first-hand basis. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> I guess that's Mel's impression of you. <laughs> you split it well, though. You, you still swim fast when your goggles come <laughs> You did. Um, what, did, you watch, did you watch the mixed medley relay at this meet? Yeah. They set it up <laughs> so much better. <laughs> So much better. It was really fun to watch at this meet, yeah. That was a fun race to watch for the US for sure. I yeah. I it's just I, such a weird event. Like honestly, I'm not that big of a fan of it. Obviously, I'm probably biased, but like just like nobody wants to see all the girls getting like world record holders getting beat by like a 25. Like that's just not fun. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh I like it I like it short course. Uh, mm -hmm. I like mixed relays short course because because nutty things are more easily available there and so it can just be mm -hmm. like it can be totally unexpected and short course is like more fun anyway but like I don't really like that they made that an Olympic event. I wish they would have made I also think the 4x50 would be so much more fun. Like I know that's not an event but like like, because then there's not as much time for it to get, like, oh, this country has, right. like, a full, like, 50-length bleed. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And, again, that's why I like the short course iterations, because at, at Worlds, you have, like, mixed 4x50 medley relay and uh -huh. mixed 4x50 free relay. And uh, I think those are just, yeah, way more fun and way more fun to watch, too. Yeah. Can you but, say no, you guys, I killed it this time. Team USA is, 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 we're back, we're back, we're back like fourth on the, at the we're first. We're third right now. Um, that's okay. That South Korea is leading off with um, Fong Sun Wu. And so he's going to give him a lead. But there's, Britain, there's... Britain's leading off with Tom Dean, I think. And so the, or sorry, they're leading off with James Guy. James Guy. So they're also going to have, you know, James is a relay, a relay stalwart. So they're going to um, be out there, I think, too. Although now, the U.S. is in second. Yeah, it's interesting that all the um, Great Britain freestyler guys have uh, a like big gallop in their stroke. Ooh, that is an interesting point. I like I'm James wondering... Guy, Tom Dean, Jacob Whittle. Uh, mm -hmm. what's that guy's name? Matt Richards. Mm -hmm. They all have a gallop. They all have that. Drew's charging home. Curious as to what he's going to do after coming off of the having COVID. Yeah. So looks like he was one forty five five. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it looks like they're all kind of tightly bunched. Huang gave Korea a lead, but I don't think they're going to be able to maintain that. Foster's are. I'm sorry. What'd you say, Lydia? Oh, I was just asking who is our who's in the oh, water. Yeah, first. yeah. Carson's US. in the water. You can see it's a 145, 57. Is first uh, at, at team trials. Um, Jacob Whittle for Britain. Uh, Australia is out there in lane eight doing pretty well. Zach and Surdy is in the water for them. Um, their third leg is kind of the it's the big question mark for them. Korea is yeah. hanging on pretty well. I'm and curious. Can... What, I'm curious as what this back this back half 100 is going to look like for Carson after t hearing from his brother yesterday on the stream that he. Is so fit, he would like to swim. He'd really like to swim a 400 meter right now. Um, Mel, you know we reported that like before trials, right? Like he was going to swim the 400 free. Yeah. It didn't work it's, out. That seemed like fake news. <laughs> he told me that himself. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, was, that was a Foster Channel and Ryan Lochte. Yeah, I'm going to do the 400 meter free. But he now he looks. Here's the thing: we're seeing that we're seeing that big lungs. We're seeing the second half. Yeah. So Australia's out there in lane eight. They're in second, but U.S. has a good lead now. Uh, so he was one forty five zero on that for Carson. So that's Carson pretty good. Great. Two silvers, splitting a one forty five flat. It's been uh, a great yeah. one. We got Trent and Julian in the water for the U.S. now. So, again, this is Australia's leg. It's kind of the question mark. For whatever reason, they didn't go with Kyle Chalmers. They went with Jack Short. Don't even know who that is. He was born in 2003, so he's 19 years old. Um, he's doing pretty well right now. He, he, he's holding his ground. Um, so, Korea has Hu Jun Lee. Brazil has Murillo Seten. Man, Britain is out of it, which is surprising. Um, that's Joe Litchfield in the water for Britain, but they they're in fifth, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah Trent Julian looks so good. Yeah. yeah, I mean he's out in front by a lot. He's looking really strong right now. We look like Britain did last year. It just looks so good on that straight on shot. His line was great. <laughs> a nice rotation. Yeah. I got nine yeah. kicks off that wall. Did he take nine kicks off his yeah. last fit? Whoa. I'm guessing he, him having the lead, he didn't, it seems like he didn't over swim it. And he's, oh my, he's just pulling he's away now. Moving, yeah. Yeah. Man, Jack Short for Australia, whoever that kid is. Doing great. He's doing really good. Yeah. Australia just keeps pulling talent out of that tiny population over and over and over. Out of their Orange County sized country. Yeah, I mean it's just like they, yeah, it's just a small population. They keep they just keep popping off talent. Um so that's a wrap. I mean Kieran's not gonna get run down for two seconds by anyone. Uh we got Mac Horton in the water for Australia. Brazil's in a solid third, and they've got uh, Breno Correa, who's an experienced guy on this relay for them. Um, but Tom Dean is in the water for Britain. So we'll see if they can, if he can pull them into medal contention. It's interesting to see Karen's just Karen's turnover just feels like it's a, just a beat slower than Trent. you see this longer? You know, it's like a little bit more of a catch up stroke. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but look at, I mean, Trenton's like, I don't know, five ten, maybe six foot, and Kieran's like six five, six. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I just, I just love him <laughs> free. I love these styles. I like, I like seeing like it's, it's almost catch up. Mm -hmm. I wonder how, I wonder how close we're going to be to the world record. Yeah, Tom, uh, we're one point three off it right now, at the seven fifty mark. Tom Dean definitely has the British gallop that Lydia was talking about, though. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. He... Go, go back and rewatch this race. They all have it. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and 
and he's trying to run down Mac Horton. Oh, and he might do he, it. Yeah, he might get in there for third. Oh, he will. Seven, seven, double up, seven, zero, zero, two, four. That's a great swim. Yeah, that's a really great swim. The Brits are stoked that they got a medal. Yeah. <laughs> Karen, look at uh, Karen. <laughs> yeah. I bet, I bet, especially Kieran after, after, uh, you know, being on the relay last summer in Tokyo, I bet he's over the moon about that one. Good for them. That's a nice, that's a nice, that. that's a nice response to what we experienced in, at the Olympic games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we've got splits coming in hot. All right. She got 45-3 for Trenton and 44-3 for Kieran. It's a fast swim. 1-4-3. No, that's, that's, uh, that's strong. Do, do you think we'll see the, the swim off in the 50? Do you think NBC will that's show that? That's what I was just going to ask. I doubt it. It's not an American, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we want to see that. Come on, yeah. talk TV. But, okay, okay. Here's some interesting uh Here's some interesting things. Leon Marchand, second for France, 147.5. That's a little unexpected. We thought he was going to pop a 144, 143. Christophe Milak, 144.6. Pretty yeah. stout. Tom Dean on the end for Britain, 143.5. That, that might be the – that has to be top three all-time splits. Uh, I don't think it – I. That might be the top. Uh, that's that's really fast. Yeah, it's really fast. It's not Popovich fast, but it's a really good split. Man, the Britain seven oh four double oh after going six fifty eight last year. But I mean, those guys were really excited just to win a medal, so that's great. And Australia second, the solid team too. Um, I don't think they're going to show the swim off. I don't either. <clears throat> yeah, which is really disappointing. So, 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 so we were seven zero zero. You know, it, it's we're, we're just under two seconds off world record. That world mm -hmm. record was um, is that from two oh nine? That was two oh nine. So that was Michael Phelps, 144.4, Ricky Barron's 144.1, David Walters, 144, 145.4, Ryan Lochte, 144.6. Yeah. <laughs> someone, someone comments <laughs> with uh, easy win for Great Britain with Duncan Scott on the relay. I don't know about that one. <laughs> What's they, that like two seconds? <laughs> they might have had a, a bit more wind in their sails, but I don't know if it's an easy win <laughs> for them. They they were four sec or three and a half seconds behind the US, but all right. Um all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that does it for us today. Because I don't think we're gonna see this swim up. There's no chance we're going to see a swim off. No, we're not. Yeah. Gonna see it. yeah. No, we're on we're on commercial break, but Lydia, thank you for joining us. Yeah, of course. Always. always fun. Uh, we will see you on day 8 for 50 breasts. Is that Sounds right? Good. Yeah, I'll be. Right. Awesome. Okay.